What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of GH, first of all, let me say this. I am getting sick and tired of Jax, Carly, and everybody else not putting respect on Maxie's name. And the reason I say that is because I'm tired of them kissing Nina's ass, buttering her up, telling her how the Ava cover, getting Ava on the issue, was Nina's idea, was her brainchild. No, it was not. No, it wasn't. It was Maxie's idea. Maxie had to work like hell to convince Nina to be on board with the idea. This, I mean, Nina may have put the work in as far as convincing Ava to get on the cover and stuff like that. But this was Maxie's idea. Like, they need to stop giving all the damn credit to Nina. She doesn't deserve that accolade because it wasn't her idea. Um, furthermore... When Hayden and Jax were sitting at the table together and Hayden was like, what's so hard about believing that her and Jax could be together or something like that? And he said, because his heart was somewhere else. Please tell me he's not still pining away for Carly. Please tell me. No. Listen, when they, when Carly and Jax were sitting there, he was drinking his champagne. She had her water or whatever. You could obviously... Obviously, you can still see the chemistry between them. And I do feel like Jackson and Carly still have chemistry. I believe that. But I don't want them back together. And the reason being is because as good as the chemistry is, I always felt like this. And if you go back and watch my old reviews, I've, I've been saying this for years. That for the most part, Jax brings out the best in Carly. But I, if you really watch their marriage... From 2008 till 2011 and all that, Carly brought out the worst in Jax. Like, she really did. She turned Jax into somebody you didn't even recognize. Like, the way he was so vindictive, conniving. Like, he was never really like that prior to her. You know what I'm saying? Like, he can be a shark in business and stuff like that. And he could be an a-hole whenever he wants to be. But she took that man to some limits during that marriage. Like, I'm just saying, she brought out the worst in Jax. So, I really don't want to see a redux of that. I, I really don't. Not in this day and age, I don't. I don't. Sonny, can, he can keep her. Or if her and Sonny ever end up divorced, get her somebody new. I don't want to see her go back and forth from Sonny to Jax. I don't want to keep seeing it. It's boring at this point. I mean, the chemistry, like I said, the chemistry is still off the charts between Jax and Carly. But it's a no for me. Um, <laughs> that's a no for me, dog. Nope, I'm good. Um, and I'm getting so sick and tired of Ava being everybody's proverbial punching bag in that town. Like, it's getting on my nerves. Yes, Ava is a bitch sometimes. Yes, yeah, she's done some horrible things. But it's kind of funny to me how people like Valentine and and Nina and Jax and Carly, all of these people sit here and act like their shit don't stink. When it, when it comes to Ava, they act like they're so above her, like they're better than her, like they've never done anything, they never committed a crime. Everybody on this episode that Ava has encountered has pretty much committed a crime in some form or fashion. Some worse than others, some minor. A crime is a crime. It doesn't really matter how bad it is, how less it is. A crime is a crime. And... For me to sit here and watch them stand on a high horse and, and belittle her and act like, oh, she's the worst. Let's uh, put her on the cover. Let's do an interview and let's show the world how evil Ava is. How about all of y'all put yourselves on the damn cover and do an article and do an interview for Crimson? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. All of y'all got dirt. All of y'all got dirt. From Nina to Valentine, from Carly to Jax, y'all all got dirt. Y'all all have done something. Shady shit. So who are y'all to judge her? Last time I checked, none of these people are God. And they have no right to judge. Zero right. That's why, you know, I know some people say they don't feel bad for Ava and stuff. Let me tell you something. A lot of these people, they have their reasons for not liking Ava. And I never said that they don't. They have valid reasons for not liking her. But she has a lot of valid reasons for not liking their asses either. I'm just saying. That's what made me feel like, you know what? I want to see the strong Ava come back. 
I'm tired of seeing this moping, weepy Ava letting people kick her while she already down. I'm ready for her to be like the lions on the motherfucking Lion King and roar. Like, I'm ready to see her roar. That's what I'm ready to see. I'm ready to see Ava come back with a vengeance and get into all of their asses. That's what I want to see. I want to see the strong Ava come back. The one who gives no fucks. That's the Ava I want to see. You know, I like when Ava... You know, I like the Ava the last few months, but, you know, it's starting to wear thin with me, and I'm ready to see the bitch come back. That's what I'm ready to see. And the way that she was talking to Nina today, it sounded like the bitch is coming back. Because she warned Nina. She was like, you know, it's a hard fall from the top. <laughs> she said, you know what, why you on top? Don't look down. I agree with Ava so much when she said that to Nina. Do not look down. And I agree. Because... Nina was sitting there all smug and smirking and all this, that, and the third. Like, she done pulled something over on Ava. Like, her shit don't stink. But your house of cards is about to fall, too. Because you don't even know that you how stupid you look right now. You think that you got one, you're one step ahead of Jax, when in reality, you're not. You think you have this perfect relationship with Valentine. Oh, you finally found your daughter. But what you don't know... But what she doesn't realize is, is that the rug is about to be pulled out from under her. So I love watching Nina sit there and be all smug, like she got everything she wants. She got it all together. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because your house of cards is about to fall. Valentine, you're about to fall. All of them are about to fall. And they don't even realize it. You know, Carly need to go sit her big pregnant behind down somewhere and focus on her child um in her life you know what i mean like everybody just so smug today i'm like y'all y'all all about to get that smug ass look wiped off of y'all faces and y'all don't even realize it honestly though i mean ava did get some good comments on you know about the cover and stuff and the interview from some people out there and of course some bad ones which was to be expected I honestly wish that Ava would leave this whole psychic thing alone. Because these psychics, man, this is like the second psychic she got to deal with. And these psychics be talking some shit, too. Um, she keep trying to reach Kiki and stuff. I'm like, Ava, just leave that alone. <laughs> like, Ava's never going to have peace. And the reason she's never going to have peace is because of the way she treated Kiki prior to her death. And that's why she keeps going through all these um psychics and stuff because she keeps trying to do something to bring peace to herself you know to find peace and finally get kiki to accept her numerous apologies and make peace with kiki from beyond the grave well you may never make peace with kiki that's something when you die that's something that you might have to do on the other side you know when you can physically see her you know what I mean? Like, that's just something y'all gonna have to work out on the other side. But right now, y'all just not gonna work that out. So why keep wasting money on psychics and stuff like that? Like, for what? Um, I actually rooted for Ava when she talked about suing Crimson and stuff like that for that interview. But at the same time, I thought about it and I'm like, technically, Ava can't sue because if you... Remember the contract that she signed. She gave Crimson and Jax total creative control over the interview. So once you do that, you can't sue. So legally, they got all their bases covered. So there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, it was a smart idea getting Ava on the cover. But at the same time, I knew it was going to... Obviously, they were playing games and trying to set her up. But at the same time, you're, you're still on trial for what happened to Ryan. So doing an interview was a bad idea and you signed a contract without a lawyer to look at it. No, that's why I'm ready for the old Ava to come back and raise some hell. That's what I'm ready to see. Um, so anyway, Valentin, he uh, he might as well just tell this secret himself because that secret is about to come out. He keeps sitting there acting like he's threatening and he's a villain. And, you know, like he's sitting there trying to threaten Obrecht and stuff so subtle talking about well if you don't come home your other option is not going to be too good Valentine. you look like a fool like who are you scaring because nobody's afraid of you in that town nobody's afraid of you you got a child a child came after you sued you everything else you had a grandmother 
beat your ass <laughs> and pull a gun on you and threaten to shoot you. Nobody in that town is afraid of you. Like, you're not this badass Cassidine that you want everybody to think you are. Now, Helena, that's a bad bitch. Stavros, he's scary. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are scary villains. These are scary Cassidines. You're not the scary one. You're, you're the punk ass one, but you're not the scary one. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen now. You ain't nobody afraid of you. Um, it'd be funny, though. I'm still trying to figure out who pushed Obrek because it could be anybody. But, I mean, I, I still feel like Valentine's the obvious. I mean, for all they know, it could have been that little mysterious Cassidine, but I doubt it. Because he was seen in Italy, but I doubt it. Well, they don't even know who was with Cassandra in Italy, but who knows who it was. But I just feel like Valentine is the easy one, though. It's like, you know, like a red herring. Like, it would be too easy for it to be Valentine. Even though, you know, they could go with the obvious choice. Or it could have been Brad. It could be any one of them, but who knows at this point. I did like that little scene with um, Hayden and Chase. Listen, I know some people still want to root for Hayden and Finn to get back together because they had a little thing and Chase is his little brother. But I did feel the chemistry a little between Hayden and Chase, like the way he looked at her and she looked at him and he had that smirk on his face. I was like, all right, now, yeah, I don't want to start nothing, won't be nothing. I'm just saying they look like they had they was feeling each other a little bit. <laughs> Listen, they need to stop that because I'm not about to see no ex-girlfriend who used to be with the brother get with the other brother this is not the bold and the beautiful we're not going to be doing that over here we're not doing that nastiness over here that's not what we're doing we've seen too much of that uh, on different shows and they have done that on this show we ain't going to keep doing that that's nasty um, but anyway moving on from that it was kind of funny how I mean I thought it was nice that Liz offered this, the guest bedroom to um Hayden or whatever while she looks for a house or an apartment or whatever she's looking for. But I had to think to myself, I'm like, well, how big is Elizabeth's house? Because it's you, Franco, plus three boys. So it's already five of y'all living here. I'm assuming the boys have their own room. So that's three rooms for each boy plus Liz and Franco. That's four bedrooms. So you mean to tell me Liz has a fifth bedroom in that house as a guest room? That's what I'm thinking because unless one of the boys share a room or something, but I'm like, well, damn, how big is the home? Because <laughs> it's like five of y'all living here. So I'm like, OK. Um, but it was kind of funny how Liz said that she couldn't go with Hayden house hunting and stuff like that because she had to work or whatever. But as soon as Hayden left, Franco and Liz were going to lunch. So I'm like, you easily could have took a lunch break and went with her to go look for a house. You wasn't that damn busy if you could take off and go with Franco to lunch. I'm just saying. Um, But real quick, though, back to this Crimson thing before I forget. It was kind of funny how the September issue is out now because Carly said that she read the interview. She looked at the interview and stuff like that on the cover and, you know, when she read the magazine or whatever. Ava looked good on that cover, though. But I'm like, how the hell does a September issue come out in July for general consumption? How does that work? <laughs> like, I've heard of fall issues coming out in August, but never a September issue coming out in July. I've never heard of that. Never. Never. I'm like, what the hell are y'all doing? But um, anyway, Franco needed to stay away from these damn psychics. Now this new psychic told him kept warning him not to take that drive or whatever. I'm like, what drive? <laughs> I was confused by what she said. I'm like, huh? And Franco was like, okay, what the hell are you talking about? Like, what drive is you talking about? So now when him and Liz was going to lunch, he asked Liz, he said, I hope the place is walking dis uh, distance because I ain't driving. I bust out and laugh. I said, for real, I don't blame Franco. I would not listen. If somebody come up to me and tell me not to take that drive, I'm not getting in no car. I wouldn't even want to get into a car. Even if I'm the passenger, I'm not getting into a car. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't about to tell me no creepy shit like that and think I'm finna get into a car five minutes later. Like, no. Like, who knows what that lady talking about? Like, that was just some creepy shit. But um, anyway, Harmony and Nell sitting in the jail cell. 
K I S S I N G. No, let me stop. But um, <laughs> Harmony, two nut jobs sitting in a jail cell, commiserating over their little crazy ass life. I actually like that scene because Harmony, for once, was talking some sense. You know, finally giving praise to Willow for getting away and talking about Shiloh the scum and all that. So I was, I was digging it. But after she mentioned Wiley, of course, Nell put everything together. And she knows, obviously. Um, now she's putting the pieces together and she's trying to figure out this whole Shiloh situation. I think once Harmony was telling her about what happened with Shiloh and trying to get the baby and stuff... Nell was getting nervous because he could try to take a kid that's not his. And I think that's what sparked her and made her want to tell Michael the truth about the baby. So that way they won't lose the kid to Shiloh. Um, I could see why Michael went to go see her and stuff like that. But I still feel like she's not going to tell him about the kid. It may look like she's going to tell him, but I don't think it's going to be that easy because they did not drag this storyline out all this long, damn near a year. Like you drag this storyline out for a whole year just to have Nell sit in the jail cell and tell Michael the truth. I doubt it. I doubt it's going to be that easy. Doubt it. They're going to try to make it more dramatic than that. Um, I don't blame Michael for going to see her because he's doing it for himself. You know, he wants to know what happened with Wiley in the first few minutes of his life. Well, Jonah in the first few minutes of his life and stuff like that. And only Nell could tell him those answers. I'm actually happy that Carly, you know, didn't go into a rant and try to tell Michael not to go. And this, that and the third. I'm glad that she realized, even though as much as she don't want him to go, she realized that he's an adult. He got to do what he got to do. It's his life. And she backed off a bit. So I am happy that Carly finally wised up and did that. Um, but ain't nothing good going to come out of this. Because you know Nell. She's a master manipulator and she plays games. But I do like Nell to an extent because she does raise a little hell when she come around. And she keeps people on their feet. But we all, we all know Nell gonna play games. She gonna drag this out too. We already know. I'm just ready for this baby stuff to be over. Like, I've been ready. Since it first happened, I've been ready. I'm just like at a point where can we move this shit along, please? ASAP. Um, Nina thinks she's so damn smart, though. Trying to ask Carly about Jacks and stuff like that. I'm like, Nina, you're losing. Go sit down. You lost this round. You're like, you're not gonna get no intel. Um, her inviting Jacks, she thinks that she's being strategic and stuff, but you're really not. It's not wise, and you're playing games. But um, anyway, this was a decent little episode, though. I somewhat enjoyed parts of it. But um, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about today's episode. I will see y'all all later. Hope you have a great day. Have a great weekend. See you all Monday. Peace.